Hello and welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. My name is Humble and uh, we're finally back on the Blue Unicorn Project and uh, I'm so excited. Um, I know the last video was, uh, despite editing and everything else and shooting it like a dozen times, it was still more melancholy than I wanted it to, to seem. Um, I, I just want everyone to know that um, I'm that I'm feeling good. I'm feeling frankly better than I have in a very long time. And uh you know, don't take pity or anything like that. I I, I do genuinely just feel really good and I'm so grateful just to be here. <laughs> um the phrase I'm just glad to be here man applies to me every day. And uh so Having the opportunity to go forward and not only just work on this car, just just being here, uh, I'm so grateful for. So that being said, let me show you what we've done here. So things look a little different and uh, we sort of got cracking on it yesterday. I shot a time lapse and I'm not really sure how it turned out, but... Uh, if uh, if it turned out well enough, I'll just let it roll while I'm talking here. Um, so first up, we did uh, uh, a little bit of work building a new caster to sit under the back of the Ultima. Um, it's way overbuilt, heavy duty casters, blah blah blah. And the idea is is that once the Ultima is finished and at full chassis weight, uh, when I want to move it around freely in the driveway, um, I can just slide these casters underneath the car and push it around as need be. It really makes uh, positioning the the cars around kind of my awkward shaped driveway a lot easier when you can push them in every direction. Uh, the other thing we did is we built this uh, body stand, uh, which is just, it's a simple inverted T uh, and it supports both clamshells front and rear. And uh, again, we uh, use some heavy duty casters, just simply zip tied, nothing fancy. And then some of the foam uh, to support the nose and the tail where they're resting on this wood structure. Um, and all of this came from the uh, crate that the Ultima shipped in. This was all wood from the crate, the foam was protective material from the crate, all that stuff. So if you get an Ultima, you can take some of this wood, like these two by three beams uh, were used uh, across the top of the crate to support the top. There's probably like 10 or so of these things. Um, I used, I think six of them, seven of them making this. So there's one on each side and the bottom, one on each side for this middle support, which are both five feet long. And then I cut up another one to make these 45 degree supports and uh, these lateral braces kind of uh, in the middle and the top here. And that's it, that's all there is to it. It's uh, uh, just a simple, easy build. It supports the chassis or the, the clamshells. It actually moves around very easily. This is a, a big improvement to having the body take up this whole area here on the side of the this side of the garage. So I can actually wheel these out and get to the center tub easily, or I can just pick the body part I need off of the stand or what have you, or wheel everything out uh, in case I need to do some spraying, etc. So like uh, this was actually something I've I've had on my mind for a while. I just couldn't put it together. Uh, for obvious reasons and uh, now that it's done I'm actually really happy with how it turned out uh, over here um, I put together this uh, metro rack wire rack whatever you want to call these uh, again with some heavy-duty casters to support the weight of everything and again we're we're going with the idea that everything's on wheels everything's mobile I can just swing this around toss it out of the garage etc Likewise, for all of this um, engine-related pallet, uh, everything for the engine build is here, you know, for the most part. And uh, same thing, it's on a heavy-duty pallet with uh, casters on it, so I can wheel this in and out of the garage if need be. 
basically with everything portable, I can really maximize the space usage in the garage. Um, and then lastly, uh, to free up some room, we got our wheels and tires mounted. Um, you can sort of see the difference between the 19 stack here and the 18 stack here. Not too much of a difference, but uh, the 18s were uh, 18 by 13 and 18 by 10 and a half in the front. Uh, on the 19s, the 19s are 19 by 11 in the rear and 19 by 10 and a half in front. So it only makes this minor difference, but uh, uh, with everything all mounted and balanced, now it just takes up the space of one tire versus the boxes for the rims plus the tires themselves and that frees up a bunch of space. So we'll see more of those later on. That's kind of a short and quick update of uh, the work uh, I've done so far. I can't thank my friend Sean enough for coming out to help yesterday and help uh, build the pallet and put the body stand together and get the body and everything moved around in the garage. Uh, huge help from him. So thanks again for that. Now, what we want to do is we're going to get cracking on the car again. And uh, we're still on the back of the car. And this time we're finally going to attack our suspension points. And then I also need to work on our steering mount. And the reason is, is because I want to have things that need to be welded ready so uh, Sean can come and attack those with the welder since uh, I won't be able to do it. Uh, let me show you what we need to do. All right, now I think I've shown it before. Here is the, the rear suspension mount for the rear shock. And this side is good. Everything is nice and straight. Uh, one of the differences between the uh, Evolution chassis and the RS chassis is that uh, there is a support here that bridges uh, this gap and it strengthens the suspension mount. There's an evolution of the chassis over time. So if you if you look at this rear cage stay, in the earliest GTR models, this cage stay goes from the main hoop here, and it actually goes all the way down here uh, to the rear suspension pickup. In the Evo generation, uh, and well, I'd say the later GTR and early uh, Evo generations, the Ultima moved this cage stay pickup from the rear main hoop to uh, forward here uh, on this mid cradle. This didn't have the support it previously had. Why that was important is because it helped prevent this from happening, which is um, this support can collapse with a, a hard impact, um, like say jumping a uh, an aggressive apex curb at a hundred and something miles an hour not that i know anyone who did that backwards or anything but um just you know for instance on the rs they put a piece of uh, uh reinforcing steel across the top of this and they put some holes in it well that's what i'm gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of steel and uh, cap it off, uh, but we want to make this look nice. So I'm going to drill some holes into it and uh, hit it with a dimple die so it looks a lot more pleasing to the eye and has a little more strength on its own. But before we can do that, we need to straighten this and make it look as good as the other side.
So got everything uh, sanded down. It's a shame I had to go through the uh, factory powder coat, but these are all ready for welding now. Um, this, I, I still have to uh, deal with this plate to drill the holes and uh, uh, hit it with a dimple die, but you get the idea. This is sort of what I'm going for is we're just capping uh, this upper suspension support or this upper suspension mount uh, to strengthen it so that uh, what happened to the driver's side doesn't happen over here as well or in the future. So uh, these are just about ready. Uh, the next thing we have to do is we're going to address uh, steering actually. Uh, and again, this is all under the umbrella of things that need to be uh, welded. So uh, this is the old steering wheel after lots of uh, sweaty hands and track miles or whatever. This is why you always want to wear gloves uh, if you have a like a suede steering wheel is you get just just nasty and wears down and it just it's ugly. So I'm going to replace the wheel uh, with something else soon enough. Uh, but uh, if we pull this off. So we have our steering hub here, our quick release adapter, and this area here, we have to cut this bracket off, and we're gonna do away with this section of steering tube. Uh, what we're gonna do is replace it with uh, this uh, power steering motor. So if that'll stay put, doesn't wanna stay put. So what this is, is uh, this is a DCE Ultra Motorsport unit. While most around town driving and, you know, just putzing around freeway, normal stuff, the steering is fine. It, you do not need to add power steering. However, when you're on the track and you're slinging big tires around with downforce and at speed and, and lateral loads, uh, it's, it's like wrestling a bear. It takes a lot of effort to um, turn the wheel and hold it while you're going around the corner. And so uh, this is going a long way to uh, help reduce driver fatigue at the track. Uh, what I want to do is this needs to mount here and our steering wheel is going to basically mount right to this hub. This hub needs to stick out here. And then we're going to modify this so it'll pick up uh, right through this back uh, back here and then go down and then down to our uh, steering rack. What this is gonna do is sort of serve as our, our front steering shaft uh, support and mount. And, uh, and then we'll have to custom make uh, a little adapter that goes from this spline shaft to uh, this steering adapter here. But how do we make sure that's all where it needs to be and in the right location? Well, what I had to do is measure from our steering hub back to the harness bar, and then I measured from our steering shaft, the middle of the steering shaft, down to the floor here. And that sets our point in space to where this hub sits, because I, I like the location of it, uh, from a, a normal uh, driver ergonomics uh, space, I guess. Um, and so I, I would like to keep that if at all possible. So I just measured that the distance from this hub to our harness bar is 83 centimeters. And then from this steering shaft down to the floor uh, intersecting with this dash tube here, uh, is 43 centimeters. So now that we have that information, we can cut this out and then start trying to, to figure out how we want to place this motor. So as you can see, if we sort of set it in place, this motor here sticks up a bunch. And my it, apologies. And I couldn't hear what you said. Siri, I'm talking. It'll fit under the dash. We just need to make sure that we can mount off of these ears here so we're gonna have to build kind of a custom bracket to accept this guy and we might have to do a little bit of work uh, here uh, so we can make sure that the motor needs to sit where it can just so everything lines up 
So that's what we're working on next. All right, had to wheel the Ultima out to do some cutting, but as we look at it, cut the uh, bracket here, so that's all gone. I marked our center line beforehand, so we don't have to worry about losing that. Um, I did a little bit of a test fit and I checked and double checked and this is the orientation that it's going to need and oh god this is, this is hard to do one handed flip this guy around if we try to mount it this way you can see the motor sticks up and there's not really a good way to go and that in this orientation the end of the motor is not going to clear the dash so, it's got to go in this orientation. But if we put it like this, now we're running into the air box or the, the AC box. So, I've temporarily just disconnected everything here so we can pull this out of the way. So we can just pull that out of the way. Tuck those... Off to the side there, maybe not, okay. Um, so now with that out of the way, we can grab our motor again and temporary put it like so, and that's how it's gonna have to sit. But that's gonna block oh, these two vents. That's not so bad. The internal cavity for this thing is all one unit that's not, it's not blocked off. So what I can do is just shave these ports back a little bit and then cap them and then use these as our primary ports to feed uh, uh, the dash vents and the, the vents that go down to the legs. We'll just have to make sure that uh, our switches and our, our thermistor there uh, to control temperature are uh, routed correctly and we're gonna have to uh, uh, basically move that other vent somewhere else because it'll now be right underneath where the motor is for our steering. And then of course we're going to have to make a bracket to pick up uh, these mounts here. So I've uh, put an arrow as a reminder as to what direction we're going from the steering wheel. So steering connects here, goes through the motor, uh, and then this side connects down to the steering rack. And then these two mounts will have to mount somewhere in this area. And I think it'll be easy enough to run some uh, square stock across sort of like this. So our one mount will pick up here and then another mount will pick up somewhere over in this area. Um, I'll probably have to pull our AC box and the mount for that uh, just to weld underneath here and get, get to uh, be able to reach it cleanly and then assemble everything back. So that's kind of what I'm thinking now. Otherwise, um, I think that'll work just fine. It, it, everything will clear under the dash. Uh, the only thing I sort of worry about is any EMI interference from this motor to uh, the dash or uh, you know the back of the motorsport dash uh, clearance there and uh, any um, interference with like the GPS pickup, which also sits sort of in this area. So it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of figuring out, but um, I think that location will work for what I want it to do. For now, um, I'm gonna have to draw up a couple plans and get that motor mounted, get the uh, kind of mocked up and see what's gonna work. Um, but uh, I think that's as far as we can go on it for the time being. I think we got a lot done today. Uh, I'm pretty happy actually with the progress that we've made. You know, with everything behind me here uh, for the weekend and uh, getting the rear suspension set up and ready to weld and then getting the power steering motor set so we can start to fab up a mount for that. So I guess thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.